Also, insects and reptiles are both cold-blooded, which doesn't work well for interstellar space travel. Frogs are amphibians, which are also cold-blooded. However, a certain type of frog can be frozen in ice and then thawed out and revitalized. But this is due to an antifreeze component in their blood, which prevents or alters crystallization of water molecules so they don't puncture cell walls, destroying the cells. Iguanas can sustain brief periods of freezing temperatures, however long-term freezing involves a much more complicated process which must also take place inside the brain to put it into a hibernation state while the body is being frozen. Cryobiological genetics engineering is still an emerging field of science, one that has never been tested before on warm-blooded creatures, but there's no reason to believe that these genetics and the science couldn't be developed. Although some aspects of a reptilian body type may be more cryobiologically adaptable, freezing isn't even essential for long-distance space travel, as long as you have warp drives and can bend space-time. Besides which, there are so many other reasons to believe that this reptilian shapeshifter stuff is disinformation, and it's kind of ridiculous that I even have to mention it and talk about it in my video. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for a period of 300 million years, and there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that any intelligent species of dinosaur evolved or built computers during that time. When 65 million years ago they were all wiped out by a massive meteor, leaving us humans just one-fifth of the time that dinosaurs ruled the Earth to evolve completely from rodents. Monkey-like creatures date back 35 to 45 million years ago. The earliest known hominids date between 6 and 7 million years ago. And we have only a few thousand years of recorded human history. The earliest humans date back 10 to 14,000 years ago, which in retrospect is like the blink of an eye. So if it only took us a couple thousand years to figure out how to produce computers and airplanes and technology to send astronauts into space, then what does that say about 300 million years of dinosaur evolution? Obviously their brains were not suited for the technology. So what makes a monkey brain more suited for technology and complex thought and memory? Well, we think the reason humans have such complex knowledge trees has to do with the fact that our ancestors lived in trees. Remembering complex networks of tree branches would have been crucial for survival to any monkeys trying to navigate the forest canopy. We know of no such mechanism in dinosaur evolution that would ensure the natural selection of only the most intelligent members of the gene pool. Therefore, scientifically, there is no reason to believe that intelligence could have or would have evolved in dinosaurs, reptiles, or insects. But who the heck knows? What kind of life forms may be evolved on some kind of alien planet? We have no idea. The possibilities are unimaginable, endless. From this point on, I'm d done discussing alien genetics, for now anyway. Once we have some sort of actual physical evidence to examine, that will all change. I'm basing my conclusions and everything in this video on what is apparent from several, several hundred million years of evolution here on Earth. I admit that's not a heck of a lot of data to base such a vast theory on, and so here's a list of things I would need direct evidence of for me to have to change my conclusion and make a new video. Um, number one would be evidence of non-carbon based life forms. Number two is evident, physical evidence of an actual alien being or any type of alien life form. Three, evidence of some other self-replicating molecules which are different than ribonucleic acids. Um, any one of these things would force me to rethink everything we know, uh, rethink everything I know about life and how it works and how it exists. So. Let me know if there's anything else that I missed. Until then, keep posting comments with your thoughts and ideas, and keep revising those ideas and strengthening your argument with supplementary background knowledge. Remember to do your research so you can expose disinformation and lies and understand what is really the truth. Personally, I think that the reptilian alien crap is pure disinformation because it, all, it has every single key characteristic of disinformation propaganda. Number one, it must externalize the source of blame, away from the truly guilty. Reptilians certainly do this. I mean, saying that these the people who do, are doing this evil New World Order and doing all these horrible things in our government, they're not really people. They're, they're aliens. They're from another world. They're, they're, they're brought here. They came here. That's externalizing the blame. Um, number two, there must be a controversy over the evidence against it. Since there will be little or no evidence for, for a pretty much no evidence for a false theory to begin with. There must also exist a lack of evidence against the theory, or at least a gray area with little or no information. And number three, like all propaganda, it must have a target audience. 
the people who buy into the shape-shifting reptilian thing are almost always religious or spiritual. These are people who cannot accept the world as a dynamic equation and use shorthand to fill in the blanks, like when the Greeks and Romans saw a volcano or a tidal wave and decided that some god must be controlling it. Now, the way that the government uses this to manipulate people goes something like this. They could, for instance, tell people that these are your god-given rights. Even though God didn't give them those rights, the state made a law which said these were your God-given rights. But this way, if anything ever goes wrong, the people will blame God instead of blaming the state. And there are many, many other examples of this. I'm just trying to make a point. Uh, my point is that in a movement that is supposed to be about opening minds and creating a paradigm shift in human consciousness, I mean, realizing that intelligent beings are out there and they're in fact visiting our planet, and they may be, and these are the technologies that they can use, and all this other stuff that I talk about. That's, that's, that's a big shift in human consciousness. Now, telling people that shape-shifting reptilian humanoids are trying to take over the world doesn't exactly make them want to listen to whatever else you might have to say. In fact, it will turn most everybody off. Not only that, but then they, asso they start to associate people like that, people like people who say that stuff, with people like me. They associate people like me with people like David Icke. And they start to associate New World Order with shape-shifting reptilian aliens. <sighs> At least some of us know what's really going on. If you like this video and enjoy learning and talking about these subjects intelligently, don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe to my channel. May peace, truth, and justice prevail.